Hi friends, this is Gail O'Neill, and I teach stamping. I hope you enjoy. So, I just wanted to let you know, and I'm going to be using this flower stamp tonight, but this set, Blended Seasons, it's a double set. Um, it also has these amazing framelits. They're stitched. This is going to be available to customers um, Wednesday on the 1st. So I, I just did a little bit of cutting out, but this could be, you know, a frame on, on top of something. This one, I cut it out, plus put it through one of the folders, just to show you, you know, some of the things that can be done. You know, and of, of course, just having a, a little frame. And then the pieces that come out of it, you can either stamp on and, you know, use on a card as, you know, for your word. Um, then it had all these little, let's see if I put it there, these little pieces that cut out. And then there's one more that I didn't do because I didn't stamp it. But this one cuts out this bell. So it's definitely pretty cool. Um, the bundle is $64.75 for the clear mount. But the other great thing that customers can get next month is a new set of watercolor pencils. So the colors that they've added in this set, and the set is $12.50, um, Balmy Blue, Cajun Craze, Cherry Cobbler, Coastal Cabana, Crush Curry, Flirty Flamingo, Garden Green, Gorgeous Grape, Granny Apple Green, and Night of Navy. So adding those 10 colors is awesome. I just want to put these in here and... I'll end up taping them to the back so I see what they cut. I'd like to do that for all my my dies eventually. All right, I'll stick it up out of the way, put this out of the way. Um, this is what I'm keeping my, my pencils in. Good old dollar store, back to school, so I can fit them in there, plus my sharpener. Um, I do want to show you quickly... Um, I think from when we were kids, you know, we took our pencil sharpener and just cranked away. Well, what that does with watercolor pencils is it'll torque it and break the inside. And you're supposed to be careful not to, you know, drop them. So what you do is, and I'm going to make a mess, so let me put this piece of paper down. You turn this this way. Don't turn your pencil. Turn this. The little sharpener. And then you'll have a nice point. It won't break. And you'll be good to go. So since I have to use this for my other stuff, let me just clean it off. Okay, we're good. So this is a card that we did yesterday. Now I have this stuff all over the place. Okay, so yesterday we had a stamp a stack, and this is one of the cards that I designed. So first I want to show you just some simple watercoloring. And what I did, I already mounted it and everything. Um, I embossed it, and we do have these new colors um, it came out in the catalog. So these cute little bottles of the in colors. Look at that blue, so pretty. And the green. This is the one that I use, the lovely lipstick and the yellow. So just wanted to quickly show you that. Okay, so simple, simple watercoloring. And I do it with a blender pen. So this one is Melon Mambo, not one of the new colors, but, and I just lightly color right around those flowers. 
and kind of, you know, wisping it a little bit. And people were surprised that, you know, how nice it comes out and it was great for beginners. This is such a great way to watercolor for beginners. So then you take your blender pen and just bring out the color and smooth it out. So it, it's very, very simple. Very easy for the beginner. And then, let's see, let's do something on the inside. I don't have all the right colors out here. Let's see, I got my box. And I did use one of the new, the newer colors. Let's see what this one is. Cajun Craze, that'll be a little dark. All right, we'll go for this. So for the inside, and I think I used the, the curry. It came out a little bit darker. This is Daffodil Delight. And then again, just, just blend. And the other thing that I taught them to do, hmm, let's find it. We're gonna take the basic gray and very, very lightly just go around and I had them go around the whole flower, you know, the whole piece, every every piece. And then you take your blender pen, and to clean off a blender pen, you see how that color is coming off? And once it's clear, it's clean. And then you take and just smooth that out. And what it does is it kind of makes it pop, if you can see it on this one. Of course the delay I can't see the screen yet. I'm still coloring over there. So hopefully you you can see what that that does. Now it's coming up. And yeah, you can kind of see it. Okay, so I'm going to finish this later. I just wanted to show you a little bit of simple coloring. And we're going to play a little bit. So cover that up and let me put these couple back away okay so I'm gonna show you how to paint with craft ink and then we're gonna go do a, a technique with it but first we have to emboss so for anybody that's a beginner so first you want to use this to take the static out so that the powder just goes where you want it. And we're using Versamark on these beautiful flowers. I'll be using these flowers all the time. Okay, so that's stamped. I'm going to bring this paper down and I'm going to emboss it in white. And I have my fan going. Huh, it's starting to blow. Okay, and if any, well, I just missed that spot there. Okay, so if there's any that gets somewhere that was probably from my fingerprint, and then we've got a little bit of smudge there. Let's see if that'll fix. Oh gosh, it is blowing. Okay, so let's put this back away. Oh, Sue made it, Linda, Judy, hi Judy. Okay, and then we're going to quickly heat this. It's going to have a little bit of a spot that I don't like, but it'll be fine. Okay, so once your heat gun is heated,
And for the other things, I pre-did these so you don't have to have me blowing up the video with embossing. See how much I missed. All right, I think I got it. If not, I'll be painting it away. Okay. And I'm trying to remember not to drink the um, water that I'm cleaning my brushes. Knowing me, I would do it. Okay, so from here, this is the white craft ink. And I just take and put a little bit. And it does go a long way. That was left from this afternoon. And then you take a paintbrush. And you don't want to water it down. I tried that. doesn't work. Maybe for some other, you know, techniques, but not for the couple that I'm doing tonight. And then you just paint until everything is all filled in. And I'm not going to do the whole thing because I know it's, it's boring just to watch. And as it dries, it gets a little bit lighter. And you can go back and... Sometimes it almost seems like it shrinks a little bit. It's really that you miss the spot. I tried it with different different brushes and, it, it you know, the smaller I think the better except for this one thing I'm going to show you and I used a little bit bigger brush but I'll just get one one flower almost done so you just keep going around and painting like that until it looks like that and you want it to be totally dry so you either leave it for a couple hours or, or dry it on your low setting. Um, the one thing that I will tell you is, you know, from touching it, you do get some spots. But if you take, let me make sure that's clean. If you take your blender pen, you can clean up any spots that it gets to. So that was like a lifesaver when I tried that and it worked. And the only reason that I figured that out was because if you go to actually watercolor on here, the ink never really dries. So all it does is kind of move it around. So, yeah, live and learn and try and experiment and whatever. So then what I did, I don't think I showed you the finished card, so I'm not going to yet. So what I do is go back over it with the pencils and you're never going to add water to it. You're just going to color. The drier your ink is there, the better it's going to come out. So I start with a dark color. I don't even worry about, you know, getting it on to the, to the white because when it's totally done, you don't even really notice it. You know, you kind of try to stay away from it. But 
but this is even coming out better than the one that I did this afternoon because it's it's dried longer. And then you take um, a lighter color and blend right into where you just did and color to the end. I suppose if you wanted to, you could, you know, leave some, some white. Um, what would be really pretty too, and I haven't done one like that, is to say, just do your leaves, maybe the buds and, you know, leave, maybe the inside of the flower and leave the rest white would be very pretty also. I just haven't done that yet. But you see how easy this is and... You're just coloring, no blending, you know, with the water, nothing. So one color will just blend right into the other. So I'm going to do the green, and this is Granny Apple Green and Garden Green. And I go and do the whole thing in the lighter color. like so, and then add some dark, get your shading in there, and then you can go back and blend that a little bit. And the same thing with, you know, with the big one. It's easy, right? Oh, Lynn is here too. So just adding that color in. And then go back with the lighter and blend it again. And let's see if my, the color I was looking for, here it is. So this is the crushed curry that I did the insides with. And you don't even have to go back and blend those. Because you're only using the one color. But you see how pretty that comes out? So simple. But the trick is to really let it dry. Let it be, you know, that, that white ink just be, be dry. So here is what the finished card looks like. What do you think? You like it? Are you liking it? Hi, Deb. Billy Jean is here. So that's that one painting with the white and then using watercolor pencils on top of it now I want to show you something else so I took our little bride and I embossed her in white now I did see this from another demonstrator so I did it on this which is oh goodness What's the matter with me? Blackberry Bliss. One of my favorite colors. And then I painted with the white. And it, it kind of looks like it's the blackberry, you know, going down. It's going to look different on the black. So again, I just have plain craft ink. And I'm going to use a little thicker brush. Hopefully it's dry and clean. So you just go in and paint. And then when you get down to the dress part, it's like wispy. You're just wisping it. Now the card that she did was 
absolutely amazing. She embossed in um, silver, and then she mounted it on silver. Um, then she did like a little thing here, but she also mounted that on silver. So it was a much dressier card. And I think she used um, a smaller brush. And this is more of a flat brush, and it, it's going much faster than what it looked like she was doing. And you can bring it down. You can even make it like it's more of a train. Go off the paper. And kind of curve it. But I found um, the, the less you have on here, the faster it goes and the less glops. You can always go back and add a little more. Um, although I did show you the trick to take away. So if you went outside the lines, if you weren't here before, you can take a blender pen and just move that white and it's that'll dry and then it's gone. And that's what happens when you make mistakes and you go, oh, what, should, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? So look how pretty that is. So it, it's basically a very quick way to make a card. So that's the finished one. And, you know, if that was, if I put the saying on it, but I'm not going to do that now. I just want to really show you the techniques. And then I wanted to play because I was thinking of something. And I don't know if it's going to, hope that, I don't think that's totally embossed. Um... I'm hoping this is going to work. I'm not exactly sure. So we're going to find out together. I'm not going to worry about that too much because we are playing. So I'm going to grab a bigger block. And then I'm going to take some white. And just a couple drops and then I'm going to take some green and in this case I'm trying the granny apple let's see what that looks like so I'm going to mix those together now it is thinning it out so I, I don't know really how it's going to work. We're going to find out. Um, it would probably work great on just, let me see if I have a piece sitting here, but yeah, like it would be fine, you know, on white, but let's see if it stays on the black. And I think if it does work, it's kind of thick. But you can see it starts soaking in. It's starting to... But if the color stays, it just might be another technique. I don't know. But if it, if it works, we can go over it with like a darker to get some shading. I don't know what the blends would do. Um... I'd be afraid the white would like gunk up the tip of the blends. But it might be enough just to give it some, you know, some color. And you're coloring on, on black paper, which is amazing in itself. So 
So I don't know if anybody out there in Stamping Land has done this. I haven't I haven't seen it. If I invented something, yay me, but <laughs> I'm sure somebody out there has done it. So let's see how that that dries and and if I I probably can use that same so I'm not wasting if I get all the leaves done. And let's see if it still works if because I went out of the line there. So let's see if my my trick still works. Yes, it do. I'm trying to go a little faster. I'll probably just add the darker color and and say we did it. Okay, so let me grab a darker green. Um, Regals neutrals, no. Regals. I keep forgetting where they moved colors to. Um, all right, let's try some garden green into there. So I'm just going to put uh, the littlest bit I can, which looks like a lot. Ooh, look how pretty that's spreading. Can you see that? It's like magic. Yeah, see, it's it's drying without the color. Now I'm disappointed. I wonder if it would work with, um, whatchamacallit, paint. What's it called? Somebody tell me, what's it called? Yes, yeah, so now I'm doing the whole thing. I mean, you can kind of see a green tint to it you know, where it's drying, but it almost looks like I just did the white by itself. Acrylic paint, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, it like soaks into the paper. I'll have to play with it more. I mean, the second coat is kind of staying a little better. But who wants to be there all day when you can do what I did before, just one coat and then color? So it was a good try. I will play with it a little bit more and see how this... Let me see if we... Um, Let's see what happens to the darker color if I just dry it. It's kind of staying. It's kind of staying. So I think the darker the color, the better it is. Let's try something else. Unless, uh, you know, you're bored. Huh. Okay, let's, um, let's try the flower with a darker, let's see, flirty flamingo. So we'll give it a couple shots. Maybe I'll add lovely lipstick into it. Let's try it. Yeah, I think it's got to dry and then...
Let's dry it real quick and then you can see a tinge and then put a second coat. Might be something for a rainy day when you're bored to play with. It's not horrible, but I do like that better. And it is easier. So it, it was worth a try. But you can see the color really is there. So if you grab, you know, like lovely lipstick or, um, you know, some of the darker reds, it, it, it works. So it was worth the experiment. So these are the things I did tonight. that and played with that this is one I did earlier went over it quite a few times and it, it's a little bit brighter so the more layers you put on it the brighter it'll get and the drier don't forget the drier that that white is so um, thank you for joining me tonight and um, I'll see you on Wednesday have a great night bye